Hello, welcome once again to Lato's Law. I'm Steve Lato. Today we're going to talk about whether or not a business can refuse to accept cash from you. Can a business refuse to accept cash from you is one of the questions I get asked quite a bit because people say, Steve, U.S. dollars are, you know, the official legal tender of the country. Don't businesses have to accept it? And the answer, of course, is no, they don't. They do not have to accept it if they don't want to. I'm talking about private businesses. So uh, if you walk into a business, go, I want to buy that right there and I got cash, they can, if they want to, say, nope, we only accept credit cards, we only accept whatever. Uh, and that's up to them. It might be a dumb business practice, but, but they're legally allowed to do that. Just so you know, I'm not making this stuff up. I went and poked around a little bit, and uh, obviously the law doesn't exist, so you can't find it. But uh, you can find a statement on the Federal Reserve's website, uh, and it talks about how, and we'll get this in another context in a moment, but context, Section 31 U.S.C. 5103 is entitled Legal Tender, and says United States Coins and Currency... Uh, our legal tender for all debts, public charges, taxes, and dues. So a lot of people assume that that means that if you walk into a business and offer them cash, they have to accept it because it's legal tender. Well, it turns out that um, this statute means that all United States money, as identified above, is a valid and legal offer of payment for debts when tendered to a creditor. There is, however, no Federal Reserve statute and no federal statute mandating that a private business, person, or organization must accept currency or coins as payment for goods or services. Private businesses are free to develop their own policies on whether to accept cash unless there is a state law which says otherwise. So if there's a law in your state requiring it, possibly. I've never heard of that, though. So if you think there's one in your state, please poke around, find it if you can, and if you can find it, pass it along to me. If you can't find it, don't send me a note that says, hey, in my state, it's illegal. I just can't find the statute. <laughs> now, other issues regarding currency that we got to talk about. I, uh, by the way, some of you are wondering where the $100 bill is. It's right here. Uh, but, ah, the smell of hundreds. But here's the thing. I actually had a guy send me a nasty email and said, Steve, you just committed a felony. You committed a felony. And, you know, here's the thing. I, people, I've, I've mentioned before, make all kinds of strange comments and, I, and sometimes I know I'm being punked. I know people are trolling me. I understand that. But the guy who wrote that note said, Steve, you just committed a felony by showing a $100 bill on camera. He said, that is a felony. And I said, no, it's not. And he wrote back and he goes, yes, it is. And I said, huh, interesting. Because it's not a felony. And obviously, for me to do this on camera <laughs> with impunity, I am an attorney I assure you it is not a felony for me to show you this on camera. I'm sorry, I don't mean to overplay that. So in case you're curious, there's a federal statute that says it's not a felony. 18 U.S.C. 504, uh, and it says printing and filming of United States and foreign obligations and securities. And you might guess that what we're doing right now is considered filming. Notwithstanding any other provisions of this chapter, the following are permitted. The following are permitted. So you actually have a statute that says, yes, you're allowed to do this. What are you allowed to do? The making or importation of motion picture films, microfilms, or slides for projection upon a screen or for use in telecasting of postage stamp, revenue stamps, and other obligations and securities of the United States and postage and revenue stamps, notes, bonds, and other obligations or securities of any foreign government, bank, or corporation, no prints or other reproductions shall be made from such films or slides except for purposes of, and it talks before. So I am specifically allowed to show this as part of a film. The only thing that would be illegal is if you took the film or someone took the film, ran it through some kind of device that allowed you to extract that image, and then you extracted that image and started making counterfeit money with it. Okay, That would obviously be illegal. But the, the, the statute specifically explicitly says you are allowed to use real money on film. What's funny about that is, is that some people, you'll notice this if you watch a lot of TV or movies, that they often use things that are clearly dummies, meaning that they have a can of beer and it just says beer. Uh, or, or, you know, they'll, they'll have some product and they'll, they don't want to put the real, so they'll put a, a fake name on it. Uh, and, and they're doing that for a variety of purposes. And in the old days, you'd often see them using money that was fake. And it always ruins one of those, you know, bad detective shows from the 70s, <laughs> Macmillan and Wife. They open up a bag and it's filled with ransom money, and the bills are obviously not real. It's like, it's like a cross between like Monopoly money 
and 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 like you know bank notes from you know uh, Estonia or something. But the point is that many people assume that the reason they do this is there's a law that says they can't put real money on film. Uh, no, there's actually a law that says you can put it on film. The problem is that to have an actual suitcase filled with a million dollars would require somebody <laughs> to do a lot of work, either gathering up a million dollars and bundling it and putting it on camera and then keeping it on the set without, without it getting stolen, or putting like the top bill and the bottom bill are real and the ones in the middle are fake. And the interesting thing is that I actually saw a question and answer, and I forgot where I saw it on the internet, but somebody said, well, to be on the safe side, shouldn't we just use fake money? And interestingly, if your fake money looks too real, you might be counterfeiting, which is a federal offense. So you're better off using real money because you're explicitly allowed to. Why would you make fake money that looks kind of real to use that when you can use the real stuff? So... You know, maybe it's one of those Oceans movies where it's like, you know, $300 trillion that's been bamboozled out of a casino and, you know, it's stacks of money this high and, you know, maybe maybe making that prop might be difficult or whatever. But then again, you know, they can make dinosaurs look real on film nowadays, so it can't be that hard to dummy that up. But if you want to use real money on film, knock yourself out. Uh, a couple other questions. Uh, if you mutilate uh, or destroy currency, believe it or not, that is, in fact, against the law. Um, and likewise, and this is one many people wouldn't remember or think about, but you can't mutilate, mutilate or, or dimin <laughs> well, let's see, diminution is the word. What's, it, what's the derivative? What, what's it come from? Um, I don't know. But the mutilation, diminution, and falsification of coins is also illegal. Whoever fraudulently alters, defaces, mutilates, impairs, diminishes, falsifies, Scales or lightens any of the coins coined at the mints of the United States or any foreign coins which are by law made current or are in actual use or circulation as money with the United States or possesses, passes, utters, publishes, sells, attempts to pass, utter, publish, or sell, or brings into the United States any such coin, knowing the same to be altered, defaced, mutilated, impaired, diminished, falsified, scaled, or lightened, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for five years. Now, you might say, wait a second, Steve. Uh, you're telling me if I accidentally damage a U.S. coin, uh, I'm going to go to prison? Well, first of all, U.S. coins such as this Ike dollar, by the way, I'm not breaking the law, putting it on camera either. <laughs> this Ike dollar, it'd be kind of hard to accidentally mutilate that, okay? Obviously, it'd be kind of hard to accidentally mutilate that or whatever. Uh, so you'll notice, though, that the second word of the statute is fraudulently. Whoever fraudulently alters, defaces, mutilates, impairs, and blah, 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 blah. So um, if you are fraudul fraudulently doing any of those things, you've committed a felony. Which brings us to the obvious question that three people are going to ask if I don't answer it right now. What about those machines at the museums and zoos where you take a penny and you stick it in the machine and you roll the crank and it, it squishes the penny out? And it, and it then turns it into, and it puts an imprint on one side of something, okay? It could be an animal at the zoo. It could be the name of the locality or maybe the name of the uh, museum. I think the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn's got that. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's one at Copper World in Calumet. <laughs> and I've seen them many other places. Uh, but the interesting thing is the argument there is they're not doing it fraudulently. And the obvious argument is that once you've taken that penny and rolled it through the machine, um, it, it, it couldn't be passed off as money anymore. In fact, it, 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 it did uh, you know, basically destroy the coin. But did you do it fraudulently? And I think the argument would be that no, you did not. I remember when I was a little kid, I grew up near the train tracks. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which side. And uh, I remember as, as a kid going down to the train tracks and putting coins on the train tracks. And the train would go by and then you'd go have to go look for the coin because they don't always stay where they started. And in fact, a, a, a train running over a coin uh, can often cause the coin to shoot off in different directions. You'd find them 5, 10 feet away. Um, and I remember putting pennies on there and nickels on there, watching all the different things, you know. And I remember we were on the tracks one day and, and, and some killjoy, an adult, came up to us and said, hey, what are you kids doing, you know? And it's like, who are you, the, the railroad police? You know, it's just some guy who lives nearby. And he goes, what are you doing? And I go, well, you know, uh, I just put a penny on the train tracks. I'm looking for it. And he goes... You just committed a federal offense. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, wait, wait, now you're not just the train police. Now what are you, the treasury police? <laughs> but no, it wasn't committing a federal offense. And so the other thing you have to worry about when we talk about currency, obviously, 
um, is that uh, counterfeiting. And counterfeiting is a big, bad deal. So you want to be careful about counterfeiting. Uh, and so be aware that um, anybody who, with intent to defraud, falsely makes, forges, counterfeits, or alters any obligation or other security of the United States shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than 20 years. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Uh, and you'll notice again it says, um, with intent to defraud, falsely makes, forges, counterfeits, or alters any obligation. And, and, and interestingly enough, you say, well, wh why do they use this broad language, um, forges, counterfeits, or alters? Alters? And, and people think, well, lawyers just love putting all these words in there. So instead of just saying this is illegal, they'll say, well, this, 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 this are illegal, when they all appear to be kind of synonyms. And they're not. And so I don't know if you've heard this or not, but, but a lot of modern money, like this $100 bill, has like a security strip in it and a watermark in it and a bunch of other stuff that makes it look like a real dollar bill, $100 bill. And so most of the dollar bills in America above, I think, the I think it's above, it, singles no, but I think fives and tens and higher all have security strips and watermarks and all kinds of other security features on them. And so what some bad guys were doing is they would take a $10 bill and bleach it. And then they'd run it through a color printer and reprint it as 100. So if you looked at it without paying attention, there'd still be possibly a watermark and a security strip and some other stuff. But the watermark would be of the wrong president, okay? And it was, you know, it's the $5 watermark on the $100 bill or the $10 watermark or whatever. And so if, if those people had gotten busted and hired a fancy pants lawyer and all it said was, you know, people who, you know, make or forge, say, well, I'm not making or forging it. I altered it. Well, that's why we say make, forge, counterfeit, or alter. And they're covering it every possible way. So that's one of the reasons that they write statutes that broadly. And then you should also be aware of the fact that if, in fact, you um, uh, are getting yourself into the counterfeiting business, which I do not recommend, um, you might know if you watch the movie Catch Me If You Can that some of that stuff is kind of complicated to print and might require, like, say, four-color four printing. But, of course, you can do that now with laser printers and so on. I don't recommend it, obviously, but I'm simply saying what these people do. And so if you were getting set up and thinking about doing counterfeiting and uh, you did this and you somehow got rid of the cash the money, and the feds kick down the door with a search warrant, and they come in and they find your equipment. You can't say, hey, guys, the money's not here. Guess what? It's a federal offense to have the equipment also. So whoever having control, custody, or possession of any plate, stone, or other thing, or any part thereof from which has been printed or which may be prepared by direction, blah, 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 blah. And it talks about if you have any of the things with which you can print this stuff, and it looks like you were setting it up to do that, even if you didn't do it yet, you could still be found guilty of a federal offense, and it falls into the same category uh, of, of things like counterfeiting. It's just, you know, so they don't like counterfeiting. Counterfeiting is actually a pretty bad problem right now. I've, I've seen some uh, recent articles on how much money, counterfeit money is in circulation, and the complaint is, of course, that counterfeits are getting better and better. Back when I worked at the gas station, which is the early 80s, late 70s and early 80s, um, a guy came in and passed a bad $50 bill. And a guy I was working with who's a little bit older than I was uh, spotted it. He's like, oh, my gosh, look at this. It's, he goes, it's a counterfeit $50 bill. And we had a um, safe in the building that you could put stuff into without opening the safe. And he walked in, dropped the 50 in the safe, cranked the handle, and he walked back out to the guy. And he goes, dude, he goes, that 50 you just gave me his counterfeit. And the guy goes, well, I want it back. And my friend goes, No. In fact, because if you want to, you can come back tomorrow and talk to the owner of the gas station about it. But quite frankly, I think it's more important to get that out of circulation. Meanwhile, pay us for the gas, <laughs> which I'll give the guy credit. I don't know if I would have had the guts to do that when I was 17 or 18 years old. But the guy paid for the gas begrudgingly, and then he left his information. And I remember this vividly. The owner of the gas station made some phone calls, and a guy from the Secret Service came by the gas station. And I'm talking about a guy with a badge, dressed like the part, and he had a suitcase. And I remember standing there, as, you know, talking to him as he, in, you know, questioned the guy who got the bill. And he's talking to all of us, you know. And and he, he and so I, I asked him, I go, I'm just curious, how good was that 50 compared to the ones you normally get? And he goes, ah, eh, it's run of the mill. And he pulls it out, and he's got it in a in a in a some kind of, you know, plastic or something. And he goes, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. He goes, but, you know, I'll show you. And then he shows us the, 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 the seal, the green seal right there. 
And the green seal, was it's got the little points. Back in the old days, when these guys were doing printing with the four-color printers and all that stuff, uh, it was extremely difficult to get those little points to come out well. And so the guy said, this is long before the stripes and watermarks and stuff, he goes, you know, if you get a bill and it feels funny or looks funny, he goes, the first thing you do is look at that extremely detailed work in those points, and that's where it all falls apart. So I don't know if the guy who passed the bad 50 was ever compensated for the fact that he lost a 50, because presumably he could have gone and, you know, tried to find out where he got it from. But I remember also talking to a woman at the bank across the street, and she was, now it's unfortunate, but, they, you know, they pop up from time to time. So that's the law on currency in America. And again, the original question was, must a business take your money in cash? And the answer is they don't have to if they don't want to. Now, quick question, what if the government wants money from you? And we've all heard the stories. Somebody gets a parking ticket they don't like and they bring $75 worth of pennies into City Hall. It's money. It's the government. The government needs to accept the legal tender, right? And that, of course, is where the government will say, yeah, and here's a stack of penny uh, rolls. <laughs> Start filling them. <laughs> but I've seen that go both ways. But as far as private businesses go, they can choose not to take cash if they want to. Questions or comments, always fire them away. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.